Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and Disney decided to post the second episode of Star Wars Rebels early again. It's on iTunes for free right now, so you can all watch it. This video is going to be a review. Also, big heads up too. Today at New York Comic Con, they announced that they're going to be airing a Guardians of the Galaxy animated series on Disney XD next year. Remember, that's the channel that Star Wars Rebels is on. Obviously, Disney owns Marvel, so it makes sense. This is just going to be a video for Rebels, but I just wanted to let you know about Guardians in case you didn't see the news. So careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet, but starting with top five moments, I'll wait just a sec. Okay, ready? Here we go. Number five, the original Star Tours droid. Star Tours was a Disneyland ride from 87 to 2010, so hopefully you got a chance to ride it. It was like a virtual Star Wars adventure ride that had a narrative and voiceover work. It was really cool. The droid that ushered you through everything was RX-24, this guy right here. So his cameo is very similar to what he did and said on that original Disneyland ride. So it's a giant Easter egg for that. The ship even looks like the Star Tour ship too. You may recognize Paul Rubens doing the voice. He's the same guy that did the voice for the original ride. Like he's the RX-24 droid in the original Star Tours ride. Here's what some of the original audio sounded like. Welcome aboard. This is Captain Rex from the cockpit. I know this is probably your first flight, and it's mine too. Uh, well, it looks like we're going to have a smooth flight to Endor, so I'll go ahead and open the cockpit shield. It's just really funny and cool that Dave Filoni decided to include this in the show. Just for reference though, Disneyland did replace the Star Tours ride with an updated version in 2011. They brought a whole bunch of the original cast members like Carrie Fisher to do voices. If any of you are Avatar, Last Airbender, or Legend of Korra fans, if you're on my channel you probably are, D. Bradley Baker does the voice of Boba Fett. Number 4, Zeb's Backstory. We learn a ton about Zeb's history before the events of the show. It's very similar to what happened to the Wookiees on Kashyyyk. So it turns out Agent Callus ordered the use of these special disruptor guns on the Lasat people. It's also a very similar situation to what's going on with the Jedi right now. You know, there are some Lasat probably still alive in the galaxy, just not that many. We also learned that Zeb was a member of the Honor Guard because of his special bow rifle. When they said that, it just made me think of like the Imperial Honor Guard, you know, like the red stormtroopers. Those are just like highly trained, super special stormtroopers. Although I'm not trying to make it sound like Zeb served some sort of evil emperor or something like that. The bow rifle is really cool though. Even though it looks like the staff weapons used by General Grievous' droids during Revenge of the Sith, the name bow rifle just reminds me of Chewbacca's weapon, the bowcaster. In case you didn't see any of my other Rebels videos, Zeb's race, the Lasat, is based on the original Ralph McQuarrie concept drawings for the Wookiees. So if you're getting Chewbacca vibes from him, it's totally intentional. Number 3, 3PO and R2-D2 are back. It wouldn't be Star Wars without a cameo from these guys. Turns out they were secretly on a mission for Bail Organa, so they haven't passed into service of Princess Leia yet. I think in George Lucas's original story materials for Episode 4, he describes her as being somewhere between like 13 and 15. I'd say right now where we are on the show, she's probably only about 11. This isn't really their show though, so that's why the episode didn't begin on them. Back in episode 4, George Lucas used this old Akira Kurosawa film technique where he opened the movie with the droids. Kurosawa would open the film on lesser characters in his samurai films, and you basically learn about what's going on from those lesser people, and then they'd run into the main characters, and then the perspective would shift. So you learn all about the Empire in episode 4 from the droids until they run into Luke Skywalker, and then it becomes Luke Skywalker's story. But they did end it on a similar type of moment whenever Bail Organa referred to them as a couple of rebels, just making the crew of the Ghost seem like they were a small blip on the galaxy's radar, like they were no big deal. Number 2, Zeb vs. Callus. This really did turn into a Zeb episode, which is great. It just means more Stephen Bloom. We also found out that he and Callus had this unknown history. Zeb learned for the first time that Callus was behind the massacre on his home planet. So what you're seeing is the potential beginning of a big blood feud that's just going to run across the rest of the season. Callus was almost able to kill Zeb this time, so don't be surprised if at some point this season Zeb almost kills Callus, and it becomes this big Anakin Skywalker type situation where he has to decide whether or not to kill him and go super dark or take the high road and let him live at the expense of any future evil shenanigans Callus might pull. It's a really interesting Star Wars moral dilemma where it's like, you know, as a hero, if you let a villain live and they go on to kill a bunch of people, does that mean that you're responsible for all those people dying? You guys can let me know what you think about Star Wars moral through lines. I mean, this is a kid's show, so obviously it's going to have a moral theme, but obviously I don't think anyone expects them to not choose the right path. 
Obviously, they gave the guns to Bail Organa, so they're probably not going to be killing anyone this season if given the chance. And my number one moment, Bail Organa's ship. You may have recognized them, but Phil Lamar came back to do the voice for Bail. He did the voice during Clone Wars. In fact, so far, Rebels has actually used all the original Clone Wars voice actors whenever they bring those characters back. There's only been a couple so far, but if we've seen Bail Organa and we're doing Rebellion type stuff, I would expect to see the other leaders of the Rebellion. It is cute that Kanan leaves without knowing who Bail Organa is, but the really interesting part is the last bit where he refers to them as a band of rebels. Disney was pretty clear that this show was going to be an origin story of sorts for the Rebellion, but it's not about the Rebellion. It's about the characters on the Ghost. The whole spark of Rebellion first episode just implies that what they're doing during this TV series is going to inspire the people who actually do form the Rebellion. Just to brush up on your expanded universe history, I don't think that they've rewritten this canon, but the official leaders of the Rebellion were Bail Organa, Mon Mothma, and Garm Beliblis. The listed date of formation, whenever the Rebellion officially became the Rebel Alliance, was two years before Episode 4, so it actually might go down in a future season of Rebels, unless they mess with the timeline. Supposedly, Rebels is supposed to end just as Episode 4 is starting. I don't know what's going to happen if the show goes on for like seven years. They might just fudge the timeline. Let me know, what was your favorite moment from the episode? And did you ever get a chance to go on that old Star Tours ride at Disneyland? Or have you been on one of the new ones? Overall, I gave the episode a solid B plus for amazing use of nostalgia, like the Star Tours character. It's really hard to create dramatic tension when we already know what the end game is. Like the work of the series is really allowing these stories to unfold in new and interesting ways, which is actually harder than it sounds. Part of the fun though is just trying to spot all the Easter eggs, you know, things from classic series or references that they include, like the bow rifle and the bowcaster, for instance, or the land speeder here. This is actually the same model that was inside Owen and Baru Lars' farm. You see it for the first time in episode 4 whenever Luke starts cleaning off 3PO and R2D2. It's a different color, but you get the idea. I probably missed a ton of references, but if you saw any that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. So next week, the series is officially going to premiere Monday night on Disney XD. They're going to be re-airing this episode, Droids in Distress. It's going to be a Monday show from here on out though, so be sure to subscribe to get all my videos. I'll post them at least by Tuesday mornings, just because Gotham's also on Monday. And as for that Guardians of the Galaxy cartoon, I will do more videos for that, just whenever they release more footage and start announcing who the cast is. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun, and as soon as they announce a premiere date, I'll start doing some more videos for it, but right now, click here for my Rebels Episode 1 video, and click here to catch up on this week's Legend of Korra. Thank you so much for watching, so let's all high-five and meet back up tomorrow. See you guys.